Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is feedlot beef. Not many people really understand what goes into beef production, cattle production. They just picture, you know, all these vast pastures and farms and, and cattle. And even McDonald's has made it seem like, oh, our beef comes from these pure pastures. In reality, the majority of beef comes from feedlots. They're finished in a consolidated feeding pen, a consolidated feeding lot. And these feedlots, in five square miles, you can really pack in about 250,000 cattle. Well, it's kind of obvious that the more you pack humans together, animals together, you start breeding bacteria, and that's where you have, start having contamination. That's where you start having sickness, disease. Well, they combat that in a, and to a certain effect in cattle by pumping them full of hormones. Not, well, really not hormones, but antibiotics. Antibiotics also help them grow as well. But cattle also go through a series of vaccinations. Cattle are vaccinated just like humans, and people don't realize that that uh, cattle get vaccinations. So if they're getting vaccinations and they're getting all these antibiotics, why are cattle still so unhealthy is the question. Why are there still a lot of disease? Now here's the big problem. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read an article. Um, this, this, is, this is a current article from January 2015 and this was all over the internet and a lot of periodicals and I got an email about this and a lot of safety journals and food journals and things like that. So research, this is, from, this is from Food Safety News, this is from January 23rd, 2015. Research, antibiotic resistant bacteria, bacteria may travel via feedlot dust. There have been many concerns raised in the recent years about the overuse of antibiotics on farms, but the effects of such uses have on human health is not fully understood. Research at Texas Tech. Uh, university are now suggesting that airborne dust could be a pathway for antibiotic resistant bacteria to travel from feedlots to human environments. So what happens is when you abuse antibiotics or when you abuse anything, what happens is your body, let's say for every hundred um, bacteria that, that you're producing, you get a dosage of antibiotics. Well, maybe 99.9% of that might die off. Well, after you're going, after you're going through several through several cycles of this, you're getting a certain percentage that's left behind. What happens with those ones left behind is their, their immune system is now stronger to fight the antibiotics. So that's what happens when you start having resistant uh, anti bacteria resistant antibiotics is that small fraction that actually lives then gets to reproduce and that colony becomes bigger. So there's no question that we're creating super bugs and super strains of bacteria that there could be no um, antibiotic. There could be nothing to kill it. This is this is a very real, serious case. This is happening. This is happening throughout the world. But now they're saying, from this Texas Tech study, these researchers, that the dust can act, that the bacteria can actually travel in the dust. The dust can spread to humans. Okay. I mean, it's just it's just it's it's amazing. Just to just to even think of of what can go wrong. Now keep in mind. All these cattle have had vaccinations, they've had antibiotics, they've all been treated. This is what medicine is not accounting for. This is what medicine can't do. Um, it, it's really a, a combination of, of medicine is causing this to begin with. Because if you had, if you didn't have the antibiotics, if you didn't have the vaccinations, if you didn't have all this stuff, you'd have no choice but to raise cleaner cattle, or sure cattle would die. So farmers, the industry, have gotten so used to saying, okay, just give them antibiotics, just give them this, fix the problem with this medication, give them this drug, that they don't have to follow the laws of nature. They don't have to say, well, gee, maybe these cattle need more room. Maybe they shouldn't be eating what they're eating. Maybe they shouldn't. Be, maybe we shouldn't be putting through all the stress that we're putting them through. Maybe they should actually live like real cattle on real grass in a real pasture with plenty of room to live freely. Where the where where this is not an issue. Now keep in mind, you're always going to have bacteria and things. That that that's just that's just what it is. But you have the checks and balance system, which keeps things in uh, in harmony. But when you pack that many things together, there's no harmony. It's all just an over overdose, overuse. It's a disaster of all this. Um, scientists collected air samples upwind and downwind of 10 feedlots in southern High Plains region and found greater amounts of bacteria, antibiotics and DNA sequences responsible, anti responsible for antibiotic resistance downhill from feedlots compared to upwind. The scientists couldn't tell if the amounts of uh, materials they found were 
were dangerous to human health, but said their findings help characterize how pathogens can travel long distance and places inhabited by humans. Very interesting. Microbes are pretty promiscuous and they're uh, genetic information with their genetic information and they share it across specific they, they share it across species fairly easily said Philip Smith so there's, there's no species barrier from what cattle can get and from what we can get so now lately with this big vaccination movement people are you know are really people who don't vaccinate are really getting criticized out there um, by the media and by their parents for not vaccinating their children but in the same hand, a lot of these people that are pro-vaccine are willing to ingest in their bodies bacteria-riddled beef, things, bacteria-riddled pork, things, things, animal flesh that, that is contaminated with this stuff. So, it, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to me that, okay, you're worried about certain things, but now you're willing to ingest things and assimilate them into your body. And I don't want this to be an, an anti-vaccination or pro-vaccination video, but I'm just trying to, try, trying to put things in perspective here. We take these vaccinations in hopes of being healthy, and all of a sudden, we're ingesting disease-riddled cattle. Cattle that has beef, pork, chicken, that has anti-resistant bacteria in it. And yeah, can things get killed from cooking? Sure. Can they? Can that? People get really sick from the food that they eat, whether it's through E. coli or other pathogens that actually come into your food. And it's just—it's a shame because you, we just—we don't think about everything. If we're really concerned about health, we have to think about everything that we're doing. Just not one thing, just not two things, but understand the effect of what's going on. And certain people say, "Well, I only eat, you know, beef from this store because this store, I, you know, has Angus black Angus beef, and this store has this and this." Labels of beef are so misleading. Most of these small family farms end up in a factory feedlot. That's just that's just what happens. It's a co-op. So the co-op will buy, will contract out. Yeah, they sure they have contracts with all these small farms, but then they take possession of the cattle and they stick them in their feedlots and do normal things to it. So it's just like, oh man, it's like you have to know what you're buying. And I said, if you want to eat beef, if you feel like you really want to eat beef and you have to eat beef, if you're one of those people that has to eat beef, go to a farmer's market. Talk to the farmer. Go visit the farm. Understand what you're buying. If your chances are, if you're going into a grocery store, I don't care if it's Whole Foods or what. Sure, there's there's better beef in Whole Foods type stores and health food stores, but a lot of this stuff is still just mass produced, mass produced. Not quite commodity, maybe commodity, but it's mass produced stuff with slightly better standards. They know how to market their products. They know what you're looking for. They know to put pictures of pastures on there and to write small family farms and, and to write back, uh, antibiotic free, which doesn't mean that cattle have not had antibiotics. There's, there's a difference between cattle that have not been ever administered, so a never ever policy, versus animals that have been weaned off of, back, off of antibiotics, which is a lot of the cases, the cattle have just been weaned off of it. And in some cases, the cattle aren't even tested. Not every cattle is even tested because they're buying cattle from all these different farms and they're putting it into a feedlot. So what happens is they'll test one carcass out of 100. If that one carcass doesn't have enough residue, so it can still have the antibiotics, but if it doesn't have that, that legal limit of residue of antibiotics, then they can say, well, the whole lot is antibiotic free. And I learned this years ago from the first natural beef company that wanted to sell me beef. I said, explain to me how you do this. And I said, that sounds like a scam to me. And he goes, well, you know, we have to give antibiotics if the cattle get sick and they have to get pulled out of the program. And if the cattle recover by the time they're ready for processing, the cattle can get reintroduced into the program again. I was like, really? That doesn't sound legitimate, but that's, that's what these companies are doing. So we go through all these things to make sure that we're healthy. We wash our hands, we carry sanitizers, and then we're ingesting animal flesh is just disease riddled. It just does not make sense to me. Um, and now, if we don't even eat meat, so somebody like me who chooses a plant-based diet, now I have to worry about feedlots that could be in my vicinity because of airborne pathogens, bacteria resistant airborne pathogens traveling through the air. Um, you know, but it's just, this is common sense, people. You stick cattle, you stick anything, you stick salmon in a, in a pen in the ocean, and they're, 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 they're crapping all over themselves all day. They're in that environment. They, 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 don't, they can't express their natural 
instincts like swimming, like running, these other things, uh, you're gonna have major issues. And it's, it's just the bottom line. Anything that's, it's not natural. It's not natural to put cattle in a feedlot, to put fish, fish in a pen like that. And people think, oh, because this thing has a certification for sustainability or no hormones or this or that, it's a much, much better quality. And, oh, they don't use nitrates in this. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a sad situation that these farms, producers, co-ops can get grocery stores, can get away with all this. I know people that go to certain grocery stores because they have the best meat there and it's natural meat. That's not natural meat there. It's commodity beef. You're just used to buying meat there. That's the only meat that you're used to. So you think this meat is great or you have a relationship with the butcher or, you know, or whatever. They have the right price or they always have the right cut you're looking for. It could be the cut of beef that you're eating, right? That you might think, well, this is the best beef ever because you might be eating a cut that's more tender than a cut that isn't. You know, you go from a ribeye to a top round or to an eye of the round, you're talking about major, major tender differences that even the best raised cattle, you're gonna have a piece of tough meat. It's just the way it goes. So in, in all reality, people think, well, I need my protein, I need my protein. If you wanted to eat meat because you need a protein, you need an ounce and a half of chicken a day. All you need is 55 grams of protein for an adult male and 45 for a female. So if you ate a normal diet and added an ounce and a half of chicken, two ounces of chicken breast a day, you would meet your dietary requirements. If you had one six, seven, eight ounce steak at the end of the week, you would meet your whole weeks of dietary requirements of protein. So it's not like it's not like you need to eat meat every single meal to accomp to, to accomplish this protein uh, this, this this protein urge or this protein um, level that you think that we need. The beef industry has done a very good job in convincing us that we need beef, that beef is what's for dinner and this and that, or whether it's pork or whether it's chicken or whatever it is. And when you look back at it, it's just there's a detriment down the whole line of this. I'm not saying don't eat meat. But if you eat meat, there's a lot of better, more responsible meat to eat. There's, there, there, we have lots of options. And I'm also saying you don't need to eat as much meat as you're currently eating. So, with that being said, you know, do research, ask questions, ask, go to the farmer's market. Like I said, go to the farmer's market and figure out where your beef's coming from. Go visit the farm yourself. Buy, buy the whole cattle at the beginning of the year, which is going to force you to eat all different cuts of beef. You can be creative in cooking. And know that, hey, every fall, I'm going to buy one cattle that's going to be good for the rest of the year for my family. So then you're not going to the grocery store every week to load up on meat. You know that, hey, we only have, guys, hey, we're a family of three, we're a family of four, and we only have for this year, we only have 80 hamburgers for this year. So that means we can eat 20 each, and in the summertime, we'll grill hamburgers, and this is it. Not where, oh, let's do hamburgers again tonight for dinner, go to the grocery store and buy more bad beef. We know you only have so many fillets. You know you only have so many ribeyes. You know you only have so many. We know we can only make this much stew. So all winter long, we're going to make stew out of all these cuts. And we're going to make four, five, six batches of stew. And that's what's going to be the mainstay of our beef protein, our animal protein this year. So that would be the most responsible way. If you want to eat meat, you want to eat meat responsibly, that would be the most responsible way to eat meat. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.